Welcome to the live arc and the second in our series, Indic Modernity. This episode is focused on the language controversy and Indic Modernity. Ajit Devgun tweeted on April 27, 2022. It touched a raw nerve on the subject of Hindi as the national language vis-a-vis -vis Indic Modernity. The subject of a national language came under the spotlight when earlier this month, Home Minister Amit Shah gave a statement expressing his government's policy inclination towards expanding the presence of Hindi across the nation. Today, Ajay Devgun tweeted his views on Hindi as quote-unquote a national language and here is what he said. Kitcha Sudeep, my brother, according to you, if Hindi is not our national language, then why do you release your native language, mother tongue, films by dubbing them in Hindi? Hindi was, is and always will be our mother tongue and national language. Janaganaman. The end of Ajay Devgun's tweet. Let me loosen some knotty issues related to language, national unity and modernity. A mother tongue is the language that a child hears from her mother. There can be as many mother tongues as there are homes. Broadly speaking, there are hundreds of mother tongues in India, dialects that vary every 50 to 70 kilometers at the most, across the length and breadth of the subcontinent. The wider the child travels and studies, the more her language ability expands. Still, most Indians speak one main language of the 22 different official languages recognized by the Official Language Act of 1963. The more our governance expands and deepens, our regional trade increases, the reach of our arts proliferates, the more we need labor from different parts of the subcontinent, the more complicated our language usage becomes, the more stress our modernity is placed under. Our central government seems to be of the opinion that Hindi is the most obvious choice to serve as the link between the myriad linguistic groups in the country. The states in the south are resisting this imposed language policy and if the recent elections of the southern states are any indication, the BJP is not likely to persuade southern voters to adopt Hindi. Yes, southern films have found a business solution in dubbing their films into Hindi to appeal to audiences in North India. But this solution cannot be reduced to a formula. It cannot be applied to other language arts, to education, to politics, to corporate business, to law, etc. Linguistic uniformity ipso facto is not going to lead to national unity. So far here we have managed. How have we managed so far? English, which was deployed by the British to administer large swaths of India divided into presidencies, served the colonial powers because it was supported by a vast middle-level administrative force of Indians who spoke English fluently and at least one Indian language in the region that they were located in. Independent India has continued with English until now, but English seems to not serve that role as well today. Nor should it. For too long, English speakers like myself have enjoyed a tacit psychological superiority over the non-English speakers or those not fully at home in the language. For three quarters of a century, a slow, simmering resentment among the non-English speakers is now reaching a boiling point. 
I have felt this resentment among students at educational institutions myself. For instance, where English proficiency becomes a marker of intelligence, proficiency and performance. And let's admit it, the individual student's self-confidence. Proficiency in English should not be a prerequisite for academic and artistic creativity and excellence. The proponents of Hindi argue that because Hindi is spoken by the largest number of Indians, it is the obvious choice to serve as the national language. Let me give a few comparable case studies. When in the 1910s and 20s, Jews began to consider that an Israel may be created for Jews emigrating from all over the world, a committee was formed to determine what would be serving as the national language of Israel. Eliezer ben Yehuda, a Russian-born lexicographer and journalist, was assigned to explore the options. Ben Yehuda is credited with creating a modern Hebrew language for the purposes of constructing a cohesive future nation of Jews from all over the world. Ben Yehuda did not just revive a dead language. He created new words to suit a technological age and a multi-ethnic society. After his death in 1921, his wife, Hemda ben Yehuda, continued the project of modernizing Hebrew until her death in 1951, and she gave special attention to the lived experiences of women in modern Israeli society. Hebrew today serves as the national language of Israel for Jews from as diverse as places as Russia and Ethiopia. Another interesting example is Indonesia. In 1945, when the 17,000 plus islands of the archipelago became a unified nation, they too faced a language conundrum. It was decided a new language would be derived from existing dialects with words of Malay, Sanskrit, Polynesia, and words borrowed from Dutch. The script would be the Roman alphabet and the language was called Bahasa, which as you might guess, is derived from the word Pasha in Sanskrit, meaning spoken language. To return to my argument on Indic modernity, I would say it would have been far sighted that in addition to the Sahitya Academy, the Sangeet Natak Academy and the Lalit Kala Academy, a similar language academy had been set up by Nehru to develop a national language academy, which of course would have been charged with developing a hybrid language for the Indian subcontinent rather than imposing a language on a people against their wishes. A nation after all is a delicate and volatile political entity held together by policies and common interests called nationalism. A nation is naturally fissiparous, meaning it is always under the threat of breaking apart due to the divergent and diverse interests of its pluralistic constituents. Let not our language issue add to the forces that might split apart this nation. Let its modernity take its own Indic linguistic shape rather than the state twist its people's tongue. The fact that this conversation is taking place in English is of course ironic and the irony is not lost on me. If you like this video, please indicate so. Please subscribe to the channel, The Live Arc, and share according to people's interests in your social media.